For those of you interested in the Linus Tech Tips and Gamers Nexus drama, but don't want to watch a 44 minute short film, followed by a novel, followed by a 12 minute follow up, followed by an apology video, and then followed by a 20 plus Twitter thread where someone claims about inappropriate working conditions and sexist comments, then you've come to the right place. Now, before I start explaining, to be clear, this isn't drama. If you've ever purchased consumer tech, like a gaming laptop, computer parts, a gaming console, mice, headphones, etc., then you need to pay attention. The review videos that you watch before you buy those products come from these creators. So let's get into it. Linus Tech Tips had a convention in his hometown where he extended a private tour of his facilities to the content creators that showed up, I being one of them. The creators were welcome to stream or record the tour, and one of the creators uploaded a video where one of the tour guides said this. The difference between us and somebody like Gamers Nexus or Hardware Unboxed is we test new components, new tests, every time. Now, who is this tour guide? Presumably someone on the labs team at Linus Media Group. Which if you don't know, Linus announced almost a year ago that he spent a lot of money investing in facilities in order to test computer parts and other consumer tech to help get better results for his product reviews. Now, I don't know what prompted this person to have an ego about benchmarking and testing because inherently it's not that cool. And on top of all that, it's not a competition. The point of testing a product for a review video is to give potential consumers a better idea of what it is they're gonna get and overall help them make a more informed decision. Throwing shade at other channels in the industry and implying that you're better just makes you seem egotistical, cocky, and probably insecure. What could have simply been said is that we do a good job. Because I assume if that had been said, it wouldn't have prompted Steve from Gamers Nexus to keep his pimp hand strong and make a 44 minute video detailing why Linus Media Group isn't doing a good job. As a matter of fact, he more or less implied that they were doing a shit job. And for those of you who are confused, when I say Linus Media Group, I am referring to Linus Tech Tips. His brand is so big and they have so many channels now that we're just gonna call it all Linus Media Group. So following this clip being leaked online, Hardware Unbox didn't take kindly to the commentary and posted this Twitter post online in a way that Linus didn't really seem to appreciate. There's a fair number of people that are talking about the, the whole Trust Me Bro situation uh, where there were some creators that... <sighs> it seems like you guys are... Look. <laughs> it's pretty clear that not everyone in the creator space handled that super professionally. So I'll try to summarize what Steve from Gamers Nexus was trying to say so that you get a pretty good idea of what was communicated without watching all 44 minutes. Essentially what Steve is claiming is that Linus Media Group rushes their content by giving themselves arbitrary and self-imposed deadlines. He argues that these deadlines are not necessary. We believe LTT or LMG is rushing too much to hit arbitrary and largely self-imposed deadlines. He drives home this point multiple times throughout the video and argues that it is the main reason that has caused all the sloppy work and misinformation that has been showcased in the LMG videos as of recently. Now, LMG has over 120 employees and collectively throughout all of their channels, they put out 25 plus videos per week. That's a lot of videos, but that's also a lot of people to help work on them. Steve then goes on for the rest of the video, citing many data points for benchmarks mainly, showcasing all the different incorrect information and the inconsistencies within LMG's own videos. Even though it's not actually true, they don't collect new data and new tests every single time, and it's not always necessary anyway. He also shows that Linus is aware of the poor data that is being pushed into live videos and claims that it is an ethical issue. Because if the priority is hitting deadlines and not getting accurate information out to your viewers who make your jobs possible, then what kind of company is LMG? It calls into question the motivations of the corporation and does in fact make it look to be bottom line centric. One that cares about their viewers or one that cares about their bottom line. Three of these examples that Steve talked about are worth talking about in greater detail. Number one, the 300% incident. One of the cited benchmarks was a 4090 test comparing it to a 3090 Ti. The benchmark was testing Cyberpunk at 4K with ray tracing on where the 4090 was shown to be 300% better than the previous generation 3090 Ti. The current price of the older 3090 Ti is around 1200 USD and the current price of the 4090 is 1600 USD. Steve argues that to the guy who is testing these cards, if he can't see an issue with those numbers right off the bat without doing any additional testing, then there is a massive problem, which I have to agree. Not only is it unprecedented to see a new generation card perform 
300% better than the last generation, but for it to only cost 25% more makes absolutely zero fucking sense. Steve later shows that the actual results with correct testing parameters should have only been about a 70% increase in the 4090's performance. In reality, that should be closer to 72 to 75%. We explained this previously, but that's because LTT didn't properly set their test parameters and double check that the graphic settings weren't changing due to other dependencies during test setup. Now, the reason this is a big deal is because if you're at Linus Media Group, a company that was recently offered to be bought out for a hundred million dollars, and you're essentially the biggest consumer tech media group in existence, then you probably shouldn't be fucking up data that bad. You're the guy that people look towards to make sure that they're not fucking up. So if you're fucking up, it's fucked. Number two, the Billet Labs incident. This one is bad. LMG did a review on a custom water block. I believe this custom water block cools both the CPU and the GPU. It's an interesting piece to say the least. It's definitely not something that most consumers would buy, but it's cool. Linus tests it in a video and naturally in Linus fashion, he uses the wrong graphics card. Crap. Did you put it in a package? <laughs> Get a shot of that, look at that. Ultimately, this changes the results of what the temperature should have actually been. This arguably being a big deal because anybody that gets into water cooling, especially custom water cooling for their computer parts, care a lot about the temperature and the results. There were complaints about Linus testing this product poorly to which he responded to very poorly on his live stream. It's bad because it makes absolutely no sense and nobody should buy it. He basically responded by saying, even if the temperatures were lower at the end of the day, it wouldn't change the general recommendation of the product, which is no one should buy it. It's an $800 water block. You shouldn't be looking to get this, which in my opinion, you can't really say that. While it's definitely an enthusiast piece, there are people who are willing to buy a thousand dollar keyboards. There are people who bought graphics cards at the peak of pandemic pricing. There are always people who are willing to spend an ungodly amount of money on a product just because it makes them happy. If Bobby has a disgruntled marriage, a shitty son, and a shitty job, and the only thing that keeps him from doing a backflip off a bridge is to spend $800 on a custom water block, then let him. Furthermore, Linus states that he could have had employees go back and test the video properly, but it would have cost him several hundred dollars across multiple employees' time. I, I don't know, guys. I'm not sure if I can apologize for not spending another hundred, two hundred, three hundred, five hundred dollars of various people's time sitting and engineering a workaround to a product that no matter the result, nobody should buy. This, again, is a horrible look. If you're a company that was offered a hundred million dollars to be bought out and then you the owner of the company is caught complaining about what i assume would be a couple grand to pay a couple employees to reshoot and retest the product <sighs> it's tone deaf to say the least overall the attitude with which linus approached this whole thing was just a really bad look because even though billet labs sounds like an official name Ultimately, it's just a startup involving two people trying to innovate the PC space. And to be frank, it is always a bad look when the bigger, more successful company is seen more or less putting down the little guy. That story never turns out well, but it gets worse. After the review was posted, Billet Labs asked for their one of one best prototype back so they could continue working on their product. LMG responded not once, but twice saying that they would get their product back to them, only to have it auctioned off at the convention that I went to about a month later after these emails. I even remember seeing it there when I walked past. LMG claimed that this was a miscommunication and that they would be compensating Billet Labs for the prototype. But later what was discovered is that that email to actually compensate Billet Labs didn't come until Gamers Nexus posted their now four plus million view video criticizing Linus Tech Tips. Again, not a good look. Number three, the Ponage mouse incident. Long story short, one of LMG's many side channels did a review on a mouse made by Ponage, which was considered to be a premium gaming mouse. To which the reviewer confidently stated that it was a high friction mouse and wasn't as smooth as advertised on their website. This was only to find out later that the plastic on the bottom of the mouse wasn't actually removed during the review. LMG then eventually began the process of replacing the video in place once again. We assume this time with YouTube's trim tool, that'll take a day or two to process. They're cutting the section about friction, but this doesn't fix the problem. They are choosing to leave the content live whose conclusions were at least partially based on massively erroneous work because they don't want to hurt their video performance. I want to be honest, this is fucked up. You do not expect the top consumer tech media company in the world to make a mistake like not removing the plastic 
before reviewing a mouse. But holy shit, is it funny. He was so confidently unimpressed by a product that he didn't even unbox properly that it almost gave me Stefan Etienne vibes from The Verge. <laughs> this is not a smooth mouse, and that's really disappointing. The only question that remains is, am I recommending you buy this product? No. So all of that roughly summarizes the original 44 minute review made by Steve from Gamers Nexus. No less than three hours later after that video was posted, did Linus respond on the forums of the Linus Tech Tips website with an essay. Some of which honestly had some legitimate points, most of which sounded really stupid. Steve from Gamers Nexus responded to this the next day with a dedicated 12 minute segment in his regularly scheduled upload. Linus's statement, it is an unhinged unapologetic rant where he shirks responsibility and blames others. I'm gonna talk about two big things that were mentioned in this response and then give an opinion about the situation thus far. One thing that Linus takes time to address in his essay is that Steve said that Linus sold the water block, to which Linus wanted to clarify that he didn't sell it, he auctioned it off for charity. He tries to play weird semantic games like saying, quote, we didn't sell the product, we auctioned it. I was laughing so hard at this because the reality is it doesn't fucking matter. These guys gave you their best prototype and asked for it back afterwards, you know, like a media review sample. There was never any permission or consent to take or do anything with the water block afterwards. For there to have been such a miscommunication that it ended up in a silent auction afterwards is beyond me. First of all, we're not going to argue the semantics about an item being sold against the will of a company versus being auctioned and being for charity, which we already said, doesn't make that better. It makes it worse because now you're roping in an innocent third party into a very awkward situation that can potentially make them look bad by proxy. The second thing worth noting in this response is that Linus pointed out that Steve from Gamers Nexus never actually reached out to Linus for a comment. Steve responded by saying that Gamers Nexus doesn't reach out to big corporations for comment when their actions showcase how they feel about certain things. We don't have to reach out to corporations when we think there's a patterned behavior or that there may be a significant chance that they try to cover things up uh, or prepare a pre-written response that could twist the narrative. And in this case, manipulate the audience. Basically, he said his actions spoke louder than his words, so he felt it was unnecessary. Now, here's where my opinion comes in and it's worth paying attention to. I disagree with this take vehemently by Steve. Steve, who is a self-proclaimed journalist with a high level of integrity, failing to reach out for a comment, in my opinion, is telling. In almost every piece of media where a group is covering the actions of another group, they always reach out for comments. Because if they do respond, you can compare their words to their actions to see if it lines up and it helps paint a better picture of the situation. Or they can decline to comment, which can speak even louder than an official statement. I can only assume one of the major reasons that Steve didn't reach out is because it was probably awkward to be like, hey, I'm doing a piece on how you fucked up. Do you have any comment on why you're fucking up? The reason I bring this up is because earlier in the original 44 minute video, Steve presents the why he even made it as an altruistic endeavor. This is a very uncomfortable video for me to make. I haven't enjoyed the process of it, but this is something we feel is desperately needed. Otherwise we wouldn't be doing it. And it is not simply drama to talk about errors and factual testing issues in a way that hopefully brings to light the problems so that the media organization, LMG, can attempt to rectify them if it in fact wishes to do so. He didn't run ads on the original video because he claimed he wanted to demonstrate how valuable of a message this was for tech consumers and the viewers as a whole. In English, he basically said, I've got a lot to lose, but this is more important than me and my business, which I don't fully agree with. A content piece like this will largely be viewed as drama, no matter how much you tell your viewers not to perceive it that way. Take a look at Linus's subreddit right now if you don't believe me. It's an absolute shit show. And while Steve claimed that he had a lot to lose, I think that with the video he was able to put together, it would be ignorant to say that he also didn't have something to gain. Videos like this where you slam a larger or more established creator than yourself and present yourself as better can net yourself some pretty diehard fans who will support you for the long term. As someone who has made a couple of these pieces, trust me, I would know. On top of that, the views that Gamers Nexus is receiving on this 44 minute video, while not monetized immediately, 
will probably end up resulting in more ad revenue for the future and resulting in higher sponsorship offers if the numbers grow accordingly. Don't get me wrong, a lot of the points that Steve made in the video are valid and are worth being said. But since that video talks about questioning the motives of LMG, I also think that it's fair to question the motives of Steve for making the video. I personally think it's fine to benefit from something if you are trying to do a good thing, but I don't think it's fine to present it like you're doing it solely for the sake of others. Which is why I think it's telling that Steve didn't ultimately reach out to Linus. I don't think that kind of thing can exist on YouTube because ultimately there is always money involved. As for Linus Tech Tips and the rest of LMG, a lot of you are probably thinking, Linus is a liar, LMG is untrustworthy, we shouldn't watch their videos if all they care about is money more than us. To that, I say put your pitchforks down and show. The entire point of review content is to give a general idea or a better understanding of the product that you as a consumer might buy. This is so that you can make a more informed decision and not waste your hard-earned money. While we did cover three big fuck-ups from LMG, the rest of the data that Steve cites as harmful and damaging in my opinion, is a bit of an exaggeration. Don't get me wrong, Steve is right to say that Linus Media Group presenting misinformation is wrong, and that is true, but he came at them in a way that definitely evoked outrage from viewers. I know Steve approaches content differently from most creators and is definitely on his no friends in the industry type shit. It is my job to ignore personal relationships. You know, if LMG is going to make false accusations and wants to try and use personal relationships to gain favor, so that we don't cover something we think is not okay, it's not gonna work with us. We, we don't play that game. But as a human and creator myself, I don't like the way that Steve approached this. I think that there had to be a better way, even if it was simply just less harsh language. At the end of the day, LMG videos do still provide viewers with what is necessary, a better general idea of the product that you might be looking to purchase. Someone looking to buy the products that they cover would definitely understand more about them having watched the video versus not watching it at all. So where does that leave us now? One day later, Linus Tech Tips posted an apology video led by their new CEO, Taryn Tong, accompanied by the rest of the leadership roles at LMG. The apology pretty much addressed all the concerns and clarified some of the points made by Steve. LMG said that they are halting all video production until they can get back to the standard that they feel they need to be at. Effective immediately, all YouTube video production is on pause. And our teams are going to be spending this entire next week focusing on long-term workflow changes to make our content better in a lasting way. Essentially, they promise to be better and it looks that way. All's well that ends well, right? Wrong. Here is a 20 plus Twitter thread from XLMG employee Madison, where she says she literally cut her leg open to avoid the ridicule of taking a sick day. She starts off by saying her daily obligations and her weekly obligations were insanely overwhelming, and they are now handled by an entire team at LMG. She said that she was belittled by upper management, calling her work dog shit and her incompetent. Also being told that she has to put on her big girl pants and to be more assertive. To which she later states she was then called a bitch bossy and quote, to calm her tits by a male employee. She says she never talked about this originally when leaving LMG two years ago because she didn't want to face the backlash from the community and potentially harm her future career options because LMG is deeply connected within the consumer tech industry. I have some opinions on this, but I'll keep it short by saying, yeah, that's pretty fucking bad. LMG responded by tweeting out, We are taking Madison's allegations seriously. We are conducting an internal assessment alongside bringing in a third-party investigator to look into the allegations. I don't know. I feel every company or corporation who finds itself in a scandal ends up doing this type of thing, and it very rarely actually amounts to anything. I'm not sure how investigating something that happened so long ago is going to help bring anything else to light. If there were any actual remarks, they would have been done in person. People can lie about what they said, and emails can be deleted. It seems very bleak, to be honest. Don't get me wrong, I think this is the right thing to do and realistically the only thing that you can do if you're LMG right now. I don't think they can avoid to further lose public face and honestly, it's the right thing to do if they just don't want to be a bad company. But it still just feels like a shitty situation for everybody involved. I feel bad for Madison. Hopefully she gets some reprieve from venting her frustrations because to be honest, that's probably as good as it's gonna get. Anyways, that was your TLDR. I know that was long for a TLDR, but this was as fast as I could cover the whole situation without missing the major important parts. If you wanna support my channel, leave the video a like or subscribe for more content like this in the future, or just follow me on Twitch because I'm way more active on there. Anyways, have a good rest of your day. Goodbye.